Well, you guys voted, and here it is, the AAC Honey Badger. And to be honest, I'm a little surprised that this one got picked. Not because it's not cool, but just because it is a little obscure as a firearm. Never made it into the hands of any major militaries, although it did see a lot of use for some special forces. And that is how it came to be. So AAC was tasked with trying to take the Air-15 platform and make it suppressible. Now, the problem with that is that the AR-15 fires this 223 round which is on the far left here. Now it's a great round, it's very accurate and it flies very quickly because it has that small bullet with a lot of charge behind it, but because it flies so fast it is supersonic, it breaks the sound barrier, and that means that suppressing it is basically useless because you cannot suppress that sound shockwave uh, after the bullet leaves the barrel. So they needed to slow that bullet down, and their solution was coming up with the 300 AAC blackout and that is this round here. You can see compared to the 223 round, the 556 NATO, it has a lot more bullet, a little less charge, but it actually has similar case dimensions so that you can use the same magazines and the same bolt. The only real modification you'd have to make to an AR-15 like this in order to make it fire 300 blackout is that you would have to swap out the upper because the barrel would have to be different for that different caliber. So. That is an option for some people to take an AR-15, swap out the upper, and use the same magazine, same bolt, and you can fire 300 blackout suppressed because that is a subsonic round uh, firing at slower than the speed of sound, so you don't have to worry about the shockwave there. And since I have it, we can just keep on shooting. So since it's a video about the Honey Badger, we should talk about it a little bit more. You can see that it is taking a 20 round PMAG. This would accept 223 or 300 blackout, as I mentioned. It is much smaller than an AR-15, and while it looks very similar, you can see the receiver split into the lower and upper receiver, similar grip, mag well, top rail. It actually shares very few parts with an AR-15. Uh, you can see that this buffer tube is a lot shorter than it would be on a standard AR. That is because there are significant modifications in there. It has a, an extremely short barrel as well. You can see the chamber is going to be ending around here somewhere, and that barrel is pretty much going to end here because the integral suppressor is going to take up the rest of the length. That makes for a very short gas system. And this thing doesn't need a very long barrel because that 300 blackout round with that ginormous bullet <laughs> and firing so slowly, it's not going to be something you're going to be trying to reach out at far range with, so it can get away with just trying to work in at close quarters where a small barrel is not a huge hindrance. So I was shooting a little bit low. I'm going to try and compensate a little bit higher this time with these Magpul backup sights. Yeah, much better. Pretty good. How many points we get there? 188 with 20 shots. So that's pretty much all there is to say about this thing. Uh, it was originally manufactured by AAC, but they got bought out by Remington, so this iteration isn't really available at the moment. Uh, the designer has started a company called Q, where you can buy his new Honey Badger, but it's a little bit different. It has some civilian-friendly features, because this is an NFA nightmare, uh, primarily because it is fully automatic, means it's hard for civilians to get. Additionally, it is a short-barreled rifle, kind of like this. I have this here just to illustrate moving from the AR-15 platform to something smaller. Uh, so this is an AR-15 SBR. What constitutes an SBR is anything that has a, a fixed stock like this, but a barrel shorter than 16 inches. And you need some additional paperwork for that, as well as the suppressor. But the fact this is fully automatic, that trumps the rest of the features. So I'm going to slap on Another scope here. Well, this is actually an EOTech hollow sight. And these look pretty cool, lined up like that. I'm going to see if I can get them to domino. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Maybe they need to be spaced out a little bit more next time. So right now we are co-witnessing with the backup sights, meaning that everything is working together. But at the same time, our vision's a little bit occluded by the backup sights. I don't like to co-witness. I prefer to just do one or the other, and in this case you can have your cake and eat it too because normally these would flip down and you could just press a button they'd spring load up into action at that quick press in case your primary sight fails. 
uh, but in game we aren't able to do that, so I'm just going to go on back to just the hollow site. You can see all the same controls are here. That's a magazine release on the side, bolt catch there, same selector switch. So very easy to use for anyone that is already used to an AR-15. Cool. Should have compared that to earlier with the uh, just the the Magpul sights. So the next thing I want to talk about before we just have a little bit more fun with this guy is that that process of going from that 5.56 round in the AR-15 to the 300 blackout in this shorter kind of room clearing, spec ops, be quiet, get in, get out uh, <laughs> sort of mode that this configuration is, was also gone through by the Russians. So they have their very popular AK-47 here firing the 7.62 by 39 millimeter round. It is a little bit fatter and slower than the 223556 round, but it is still supersonic, so it is difficult to suppress. So their solution was to go to this, the AS Val, which might look familiar if you've played any games like Metro or Stalker, uh, because, well, that's the gun that they use a lot in there, especially if you're fighting crazy mutants in the the uh, metro system of Russia, you're going to want something a little bit quieter. So the round that they came up with was almost the same <laughs> principle behind the Transition 300 Blackout. They just took this 7.62 by 39 millimeter round and they kept the same casing, but they just necked it up and used a much larger bullet and ended up with the 9 millimeter by 39 millimeter round. So let's shoot this. Clear that off. So very cool. Again, just the same like AK platform, though very few interchangeable parts, if any, as well as that short barrel and integral suppressor. And I'm a little overloaded with guns, but that's okay. We're gonna let them just hang out there. So back to the honey badger. Let's just keep on shooting it. And this time I'm going to add a laser. Now this system here, uh, it may be M-Lock, but generally speaking you can add attachments to this, but we don't have that system in the game, so I'm just going to throw it on top on this rail, which looks a little bit silly, but at least it doesn't interfere with our sight there. So I'm going to move this back a little bit to 15. It's an empty mag, so we can get rid of that. And let's try and just put as many rounds on target as possible with the remaining mags. So I've got four here, and let's just make it five. I've got the one on my hip. So we've got five, 20, 100 rounds, and see how many points we can get. Just shooting as quickly as possible. Should I do this from the hip or from eye level? I've got the laser, so I could. I'll do a combination of both. So ready? And go. I did a combination of different reloads there too. Not sure if you noticed, but it's fun to just kind of play around because you don't get a whole lot of opportunities to do something like this in, in real life. So there we go, how did I do? 830 points. I don't know if that's good or not, but it looks like we've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 11 flyers there outside of the gray ring, but who knows what that means because this isn't real with uh, real recoil control. But there you have it, the AAC Honey Badger, super cool. Uh, the genesis of the round was very cool. That 300 Blackout has a very cool name to the Blackout, just suggesting that you're going full dark and quiet on some sort of operation. Um, this is uh, really neat, and I wish that suppressors were easier to come by because honestly, they just make shooting a whole lot more fun because it's quieter. Uh, that being said, they do gunk up your guns a lot and they get super dirty, so you take the go with the bad. But there you have it, the AAC Honey Badger. Unfortunately, this exact configuration is hard to come by, but the name lives on in the new company, Q. If you want to check that out, it's live free or Q or live Q or die dot com. <laughs> Got mixed up uh, my sayings there. So live Q or die dot com. Check these out. They're about twenty two hundred dollars. But that's all I got for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next video.